Wow. I'm I'm not speechless <laughs> too often. <laughs> okay. I'll be the first to tell you that I'm not speechless too often. But wow, just 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 getting just getting the opportunity to see what it looks like when purpose is aligned with passion. That's it. Oh my goodness. That's <sighs> and that's the thing, there's no words for it. It's peace. I tell people all the time. Mm. I say that all the time. You know, when when purpose meets passion, oh my God, I try to you try to put words to it, you can't. It's peace. When purpose meets passion, it's peace. That's the definition, and that's the result. It's peace. Welcome to Young Ball Podcast. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? Welcome to another episode of Beyond the Ball Podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones. And today we have another exciting episode with another amazing and exciting guest. And I'll go ahead and just uh, let you all in uh, j- just on just a little bit about our guest today. She's none other than the head coach of the Godby Girls basketball team down there in Florida. She also is the host of the Coaches Bible Study. And j- just, just as you said before, Coach, you're, 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 you're one of the educators down in the trenches Without further ado, let's go ahead and welcome in Coach Chelsea Johnson here. How we doing, Coach? Jonathan, how you doing, man? I'm just so thankful to be here. I'm excited. Uh, You said it best, you know, just a humble servant, uh, an educator down here in Tallahassee, Florida. And I'm blessed to actually be uh, at the school where I was a student and an athlete. So Mm -hmm. it's coming full circle. I teach the the babies. I call them my babies. I don't care if they're seniors. They're my babies. And, um, you know, just I bleed blue and white, our colors, because I, I've walked these halls as a student and now to walk them as an educator, especially in these times, uh, truly in the trenches, within the pandemic, within this new way of work mm-hmm. down here. In Tennessee, we're in a, a hybrid model between digital and brick and mortar. So things are a bit different here, but much like and shout out to all my educators and affiliates of education in the trenches because these are definitely new times <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. De- definitely definitely so i was looking i was looking at your twitter i think it was the the other day well when we first connected i was looking at your twitter and and i, and I saw a particular clip of, of you out there uh hooping uh with, with the young ladies but then i was on your twitter today and then i saw another clip i believe and i was just watching and i was like wait a minute is, is this is this a highlight reel or what what's happening <laughs> Listen, here's the thing, you know, I tell people all the time, uh, my, my brother calls me the family archivist. Um, and I tell people all the time, you know, it's social media can be good and bad. It just depends on how you use it. And mm-hmm. with so much going on, it just popped up in my memories today. Uh, and especially in times like these, where we don't know if we're going to have a season. It was just like, wow. But that's one of the biggest things about coaching, especially at your alma mater that gets you. Mm-hmm. Every now and again, because basketball is a winter sport, from August to October here in Tallahassee, they see Miss Johnson. And of course, it's a podcast, so people can't really see me, but this is what they see. And then in October and November, when we open up the season, I just have to show them a little bit. You know, we teach a generation that has to be shown. And so Mm -hmm. every now and again, I got to lace them up and show them that it's not gone. Now, my recovery time is a little bit longer these (laughs) days. You know, it just gets me excited and keep them keep them pumped in the midst of so much negativity going on, and they can just see their coach and the person that's teaching them, you know, crossing somebody over real quick. Yeah, yeah, and 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 at, and at, just just as you're saying that, coach, you you just making me really think of just just back to my junior college days, and I'm not going too deep in it, but uh, but I'm I'm just saying, just thinking about that, I remember the times when our coach would come out on the on the court, and you know, because coach mm-hmm. usually is telling us what we need to do, telling us the game plan walking us through but then when we see coach out there and then coach really has something then you're also more That's likely right. to listen you're also more likely to say oh wow well she might know what she's talking about he might know what they're, they're talking That's about so right. so he, even with even with seeing that clip and i know that was my first introduction to you uh was seeing the clip and seeing you out there and i had to I had to reach out to you and i was like coach <laughs> what, what, what's going on here what's happening <laughs> I'm so glad that you did. And even furthermore, what you're saying is the students, especially my, our male population, you know, I find that there's some I couldn't break through to between August, you know, and October, that first nine weeks. And they're just so happy to be in the gym. And it's like, mm. wait, Johnson? 
And then next thing you know, now it's good morning. Now it's, hey, I got a question. Hey, I'll volunteer to read. And so it's one of those connection points too that they get to see, you know, our young people that, hey, look, we're older, we're professionals now, but there was a time where we did exactly what you did. And so we can meet each other where we are. Yeah, definitely. And and I think that's one of the things, just, just like people typically talk about in counseling and certain types of therapy, that they get individuals' hands active because then their mouths are more likely to then begin to share and the brain Absolutely. is going. And, 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 and what you're saying is like, you're, you're meeting them in a space to where now I, I don't just see you as teacher. I don't just see you as this young lady, but that's now it. I can... I can talk to you about other things because you see me in other places outside of being students and, and even, even outside of being athletes. Cause you know, before, cause we all know open gym, you know, there's that time of before when we're picking teams and some of us are stretching a little bit longer than others. And then the time <laughs> after we get through playing that, that there's still a little bit of layover time and different conversations happen, you know, and, and different Absolutely. things are opening up. So yeah, Co Coach, I want to I want to talk with you a little bit because you 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 started talking about the, the young men, and we're we're gonna definitely dive into your story. But so I, I did a little bit of digging, and I, and I saw something uh, that 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 you've created, uh, something that you've invested in called called Cougar Kings. Can can you talk a little bit about what, oh, what that is? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so Cougar Kings is something that honestly, I tell people all the time, I truly am just a vessel and not even to try to sound cliche or, you know, I truly humble myself at the Lord's feet. And when he tells me to move, I want to move. Oftentimes it's, I don't say it's hard, but in education, you know, there's a separation between church and state, you know, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when God tells me to move, I don't care what laws, I don't care what things are in place, I'm going to move. And so for our male population here at Godby High School, and as I said, I'm totally invested, but even more so as an alumna of this school, um, you know, our young men just need somebody. And that connection started much like that clip you saw. They'll listen to me. Because it's like, oh, wait, that's Coach Johnson. All right, okay, I'm going to chill, Miss Johnson. All right, I got you. You know, and we're <laughs> that can't find that connection. And so, you know, here, unfortunately, uh, the past school year, we had, if I'm not, I, I'm trying not to over-exaggerate, but honestly, I believe we lost six to seven students um, to gun violence. Um, and, you know, one, unfortunately, to, you know, suicide, mental health is real. And mm -hmm. it really took a toll on me. It's going to take a toll on anybody with a loss. But, you know, I'm sitting here currently talking to you in my classroom, and I'm looking at a desk right in front of me that I try my best not allow somebody to sit in because I'm remembering, and I'm going to say his name, Kobe Mathis, mm -hmm. one of my amazing ball player who was shot down and killed maybe five minutes from where I work. Wow. And you get to a point where it's enough to say, rest in peace. You get to enough to say, oh, I'm tired of this. Things have got to change. But how much are we going to stand on the sidelines and say things have got to change instead of getting in the trenches, getting our hands dirty and saying, I'm going to be the change I want to see. Mm. And so with my administration who are, they're so amazing. And I said, you know, do me a favor. I want you to give me those lists of students that as they call them are at risk. You know, mm. one of my sister's for a venture called At Promise. Uh, they at Promise Center in Atlanta. And I love that term. And I said, you know, I need those 20, bottom 25%, the ones that no one wants in their class, but they have to be the ones that people feel they can't get through to. I want those young men, give them to me. And they looked at me like, are you sure? <laughs> and I'm like, yes, give them to me. I mm -hmm. really feel that I can be in a place to, to affect change. I have networking with individuals, amazing men in the you know, area and abroad that were willing to step in and help these young men. So we grouped them together. And of course, the first young man said, what did we do? So that's how I knew that we were on the right page. And the, the first line I said to them is, you didn't do anything but just breathe. And because you're breathing, I wanna keep you that way. Mm -hmm. And we sat and talked and it was myself and some administrators and other teachers that just again was tired of saying rest in peace and we provided different things for them like just seminars and people Florida State coaches FAMU coaches that you know really just want to be a part of it and of course we got derailed a little bit because of the pandemic but this is something that we're going to continue doing just reaching to these young men they're tired of lectures all right that doesn't always work for them they're tired of being told and labeled because they have goals or because they have dreads or because their pants may be a little too low. Mm -hmm. But we have to 
reach them with things, you know, let's, let's show them better. You know, there's a term out there from a nonprofit organization that says what they see is what they'll be. Mm -hmm. So let's show them, let's show them the football coaches that look like them at Florida State and FAMU. Let's show them business owners who went to Godby High School. Let's show them lawyers who went to Godby High School. Let's show them that there is more to them than what people are labeling them as. And we actually, because they did, we went, we didn't make them. After the first that who wants to return and we had a hundred percent of the young men wow. that agreed showing up and even within the pandemic we got messaged hey coach Johnson we miss y'all hey when we get back started and so it's just been amazing to see we've seen you know teachers emailing saying I've seen a difference in XYZ I, I've seen a difference you know, Joe Schmo I've seen that difference and that's the blessing in this and I tell them you're kings what they see is what they'll be but what they are is what you call them mm. they will answer them and you are a king you know I, I believe it's donna lawrence he has a song that says there's a king in you there's a king in you mm -hmm. but if all you see is people talking down on you and telling you what you can't be that's what they're going to answer to they will answer to what they're called and we call them kings here at Godby high school wow wow <laughs> coach you, you got to chill out over there you got to chill out coach <laughs> Hey, man, I'm just telling you, I get really passionate, as you can tell, when we start talking about our young people, and especially, you know, my young men. I love my ladies, too. I love my babies. But when I it, when those young men, that really hits home for me, um, just because sometimes I feel, especially our young Black men and our young Black and brown young men, they're being written off, mm. um, you know, misunderstood. They're being labeled. They're being targeted. You know, I don't have kids of my own yet, but I always say I want boys. I want boys. God bless me with boys. And then there was a minute in there where I was like, God, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. You know, because those prayers of a black mother are different of a black son. Okay. And so, but then I said, you know what? I do still want a son if that's what I'm supposed to have. But for these sons that I teach and that I coach and that I educate every day, there are kings in this young man. Stop labeling them. Stop thinking that they're anything else and we're going to resurrect the young black man mm. wow wow well coach chelsea just, just so you know whatever i can do to help whatever i can do to be a resource whatever i can do to be a part just 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 tug on me pull on me and and we we definitely we definitely will will make that happen we definitely hey will. i appreciate that so much truly i do yeah we, we definitely will make that happen now now coach i want you to rewind the clock and, and, and turn it back a little bit and 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 Take, take us on the journey of how you got to this point, like to, to how you're passionate about doing this level of work, to, to, to the way that you're investing in these young ladies' lives and investing in these young men's lives. And, and I see the backdrop that, that, that says the servant leader, but, but talk, talk to us a little bit hey. about, about your journey. <laughs> Absolutely. So, you know, of course, you know, it wasn't education. Of course, you know, it wasn't, young people, right? Because we have our own plans, right? And then God mm. comes in hey, did you forget that I placed you here for a reason? So we can joke and play like this is your world, you know, but this is my world, you live in it and let's follow my plan, you know? So of course in my plan, I was gonna be a dentist. That was my plan. My whole life growing up, that was my passion. I loved my own personal dentist. I spent time around the dentist's office volunteering and shadowing and that was my plan. I got a double major in biology and chemistry at Livingstone College in Salisbury, North Carolina where I was also Miss Livingstone, 2008-2009, uh, um, big advocate for HBCUs. Let me go ahead and plug that in there right now. Mm -hmm. um, and Livingstone College is definitely one of the best HBCUs uh, in the nation, uh, but had some health challenges. Um, I was playing uh, basketball, was the point guard for the women's basketball team, was playing, playing basketball, thought it was nothing more than fatigue, um, but unfortunately I collapsed. And after that collapse and some medical treatment over the next couple of months, I found out I had a brain aneurysm. Mm. And it's how uh, God has a way. I tell people all the time, God has a way to lay you down. So the only choice you have is to look up. Mm. And in the, you know, my cry out, my prayer was, God, if you heal me, I promise you that I will be your mouthpiece and I will do your will. No longer my way, no longer forging my plan and letting my own will be done. We're gonna let God's will be done. And in that time frame, of course, recuperating from you know procedures and everything that came with the brain aneurysm, I was asked to teach at a charter school right outside of Tallahassee in Gadsden County where my family's from. Mm -hmm. and, and I hated it. I'm just gonna be honest with you, I hated it. Um, but see here, the thing is with growth, um, 
and not rebelling against what God asked you to do, I realized the reason I hated it is because I was still trying to do my own thing. And I took a hiatus from education and it still pulled back at me. Um, and I went into coaching. I got offered a job to come assist at my alma mater at Godby High School. I was helping um, a coach by the name of Vernon Chipman. And I say his name because I've learned that you have to truly just shout people out. And Vernon is an amazing young man down here. And he's like, I need your help. These are girls. I need your help. So we did amazing things. And, you know, after a couple of seasons, he said, you know, this program needs to be yours. He said, I, I fulfilled my time. I believe in reasons and seasons, and it is your season. Mm. Um, and, and he turned it over to me. And so since then, I was, have been the head girls basketball coach here at Godby High School. And once the principal at the time found out that I had a double science degree, she's like, why are you not teaching at my school? <laughs> and I loved it because God has a way of giving you not only second chances, but multiple chances to get it right. And I knew that that was God's way of saying, you told me that you will do my will and not your will. The first time you mess it up. So here we are again. I've given you basketball. I placed you where you need to be. Surrender to me. Mm. And in that moment, I said, yes. And so here we are eight years later um, that I have been teaching and coaching at Amos P. Godby High School, um, doing my thing. And then I tell people all the time what was supposed to kill me what kills most, what well, most people don't understand, they've even been diagnosed with a brain aneurysm until they're six feet in the ground. It saved me enough for me to do God's will. And, you know, here I am, and I'm so passionate about our young people because I finally understood why God placed me where he did. And when I get to see young people and I'm getting there, I actually have my first crop of college graduate graduates, uh, which still blows my mind when I'm seeing that, when I'm, when I'm getting calls from my players saying, hey, coach, you know, I think I'm trying to make that move. I think I'm, I'm thinking about proposing, you know. Mm. I, when I see and sit, unfortunately, beauty for ashes in these funerals of my students who have passed on, but then I hear the pastor say, you have to take advantage of moments, and, you know, I know y'all coaches have been praying. I know y'all have been speaking about who God is, and here's the invitation to discipleship, and I'm seeing my babies come up and accept Christ as their personal savior, not because they've been forced, but because they've seen and they finally felt in their heart that it was time. And so God comes full circle. And so that is why I'm so passionate because not only is it where I'm supposed to be, but God gave me ample chances to get here and get it right. And so forever to be healed by his grace and saved by his grace, every day that I stand here as a teacher, every day that I stand here in the trenches as an educator and a coach, I, I call it my survival plan. I call it God's grace upon me to pay back for sparing me to do his will. And no longer will I rebel against it, I'm going to relish in it. And ever since I've done that, I've had so much peace. And I've just had so, you know, I wake up and we have our challenges in our day, but I really enjoy what I do. Like I said, when you enjoy what you do, you really don't work a day in your life. I don't because I get to cross up my students in the gym and the gym go crazy. You know, I get to be in classrooms that unfortunately sometimes are difficult, but I get to see those smiling faces that say, you are the reason why I showed up today. You are the reason why I stayed in school. You're the reason why I've gotten my degree. I get to watch young men who are playing in NCAA basketball and football, signing scholarships and doing amazing things, going pro, you know? And so I just thank God for it every day because I get a front row seat to watch God's will be done and unfold in these young people. Wow. Wow. I'm I'm not speechless <laughs> too often. <laughs> okay. I'll be the first to tell you that I'm not speechless too often. But wow, just 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 getting just getting the opportunity to see what it looks like when purpose is aligned with passion. That's it. Oh my goodness. That's <sighs> and that's the thing, there's no words for it. It's peace. I tell people all the time. Mm. I explain it all the time. You know, when when purpose meets passion, oh my God, I try to. You try to put words to it, you can't. It's peace. When purpose meets passion, it's peace. That's the definition, and that's the resolve. It's peace. <laughs> my, my, my. That's wow. It, wow. <laughs> that's it. I know. Blew my mind. When I finally got it, blew my mind, too. And every day I get to dwell in peace. Because not much seems to bother you, Chelsea. It does. I'm human. But when you're in peace, it just, you, you approach it in a different way. Mm, talk. Talk a little bit more about that. Talk, talk, just please talk a little bit more about that because especially during this time, there are a lot of people and you know, of course, there's a lot of problems. There's always going to be a lot of problems. Uh, but, but just talk, 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 talk a little bit more about how you're able to just, just approach life with, with that perspective. 
Oh, and trust me, it is a daily process. Um, you know, I was telling somebody the other day, I try my best in the mornings. It's either going to be a podcast or it's going to be a playlist of mine. One of the two. And I was listening. I always do a shuffle. I let God choose what's going to play for me. <laughs> and I laugh because the other day it was Joyce Myers. And I forget the title at the point, but she basically was talking about sweating the little things, excuse me, and the little things stopping us from um, being where we need to be in God's will. And she talked about, uh, you know, morning meditation. And she said, y'all don't want to see me before I've talked with God and he's dealt with me. And I, and I feel the same way. I feel that, you know, my meditation every single day continues to build my relationship with God. You know, I, I put a tweet out there yesterday and I said, you know, are we talking to God? Or are we talking at God? Because there's two totally different things. And based off of what I've seen in life, like I said, it's a never ending journey. When I go and I tell people all the time, if I already give you my track record on the times that God has brought me out, depending on health, depending on, you know, my mom was a single parent of four. Let me, let me run that back. My mom was a single parent of four on a teacher's salary. I'm giving this testimony right now on a teacher's salary. My oldest sister, God rest her soul with special needs. I have a brother, a sister and myself. Okay. And my mother put all of us through high school all of us through college and everyone even has multiple degrees every single one of us none of us have to went to prison or jail no record all of us are married all right i'm the last one to have kids it's coming i'm claiming that but the fact of the matter is when i pay attention i always say when i think back i thank him and every day i try to move out of peace or want to get frustrated i start thinking about those things i start thinking about how you know i could complain but at the same time I could complain, watch what God has already done for me. I started learning and noticing that I endured were to build me for my next season, much like the aneurysm. It was difficult, but I promise you, it taught me so much wisdom. It taught me that God will come through. You just got to trust him. See, here's the thing. God works in his time and his time is not our time. And the sooner you realize that I was talking to a friend the other day and I said just this, we know what happens when babies are born. We know the process, right? We know how to get mm -hmm. there know how long they have to as my brother would say marinate to get to full development but we also know what happens when they're premature we also understand what what happens when a birth doesn't come to full term and what side effects and what negativities can happen right so the same things will happen if we don't let god use our time and his time rather to let our blessings come to full term so at the end of the day if god doesn't want it for me at that particular time i don't want it is it a hard road to travel to get to this place absolutely but every single day that i approach life i just know that god has already gone before me to prepare it i just have to walk in it and that comes with a relationship with him that comes with understanding and saying but that's really how i live my life of peace do i have bad days absolutely do i have troubles sure do but i know who holds my troubles in my bad days and the sooner that i lean on that i always have a term that i say trust perfection i've even trademarked the term and then you ask yourself, what's perfection? Flawless. God is perfection. So how could you doubt something that's perfect? We can take medications with side effect labels, mm -hmm. right? We can trust a pilot, get on a plane. We can get in a car with so many different statistics to accidents. We trust all these different things. We trust people that fast food joint to cook our food, right? That may not have a grade A rating, but we talk about perfection. God is perfect and we can't trust them. So that's how I lead my day, you know, not to make this any longer, but I am healed, I am blessed, and I am covered and kept by a perfect man. How can you not have peace with that? You taking us to church today. <laughs> you taking us to church today. I don't mind doing that. <laughs> man, and, I, and, I, and I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying this service. So, uh, so also, like we said, like, like we said before, that, that you're also the, the creator of the Coach's Bible Study. When, when, did, when did this become a thing and why did this become a thing? Oh, goodness. Let me tell you, I laugh so hard because my grandmother and my mom used to always tell me, when you're doing God's will, the enemy gets mad because he sees it too and he always does things to derail you. Um, I always do Bible plans in the Bible app just to try to enrich every facet of my life um, when it comes down to God's word. And this particular day, you know, I'm on social media, I'm on Twitter all the time. And I was just like, you know, numerous coaches follow me. Let me do a plan that deals with coaches. And let me see if 
they would want to join me. So I put a tweet out there and said, hey, I'm about to do this servant leadership coaches Bible study in the Bible app. Who would like to join me? Sent the tweet. The particular day I was actually, you know, keeping my niece and my nephew, um, my brother had came to pick him up and I got locked outside of my house. So I laughed to myself because of course that's frustrating. It's hot. I live in Florida. It's the summer um, and I'm locked out of my house. And so but I laughed in that moment as I waited on Pop Lock because I just heard my grandmother and my mother in my head saying, when you do the will of God, the enemy sees it and he tries to derail it. Well, the problem was the tweet was already out there. And while the enemy was trying to work, coaches were liking and signing up for this Bible study plan. We had 50 coaches sign up and we went through a week long Bible plan. And it was high school coaches and college coaches. We're you know, notating our notes, what we felt of each day. And finally, there was a coach, he's become a brother of mine, uh, you know, Ty Garth, um, has an amazing, you know, youth program and initiative, Ollie um, Life, and he said, you know, Chelsea, we need to get on and talk to each other. I love that we're sending notes. We need to get on and talk to each other. And I said, okay, I can make that happen. So put together a Zoom call, and we started out with Willie Simmons, head coach of FAMU. He spoke first. Then we had Jessica Kern, who at the time was at Tennessee State, but is the CEO of the Jessica Kern Foundation. Uh, Kendra Aaron from Central Arizona. And I, and I speak these names because that's what jumped this off. You know, we had Joel Harrison um, that's now at Faulkner University. We had uh, Coach CY, assistant coach at Florida State men's basketball. Uh, Carlos Lochner, Florida State football. We had Coach Zach from TCC Men's Basketball. It was just an amazing day. And if I left anybody out, I feel really bad about that. But it was just such an amazing week. And at the end of that week, Willie Simmons says, you know what, Chelsea, and we've known each other. We grew up in Gaza County right outside of Tellus. He said, you know, we're not going to stop. This, we got to keep this thing going. So I'm like, okay, you know, let's do it. And I started reaching out to other coaches and I never received a no. It may be a, you know, scheduling conflict. It may be an issue, but eventually that I can't do it right now turns into a yes. And somebody asked me just the other day, like how many times, how many speakers have we had? We're up to 63 speakers. We've been doing this for the past six months. We're up to 63 speakers and we've had the likes of Coach Kelly Graves at the University of Oregon. We've had, you know, um, my idol, one of my idols, Cheryl Swoops on the line. If you would have talked to me months ago and said, you're about to talk to multiple WNBA champion, gold medalist, Hall of Famer, Cheryl Swoops, I would have told you, no, nah, that's not true. We've had Cappy Poindexter on, WNBA, so, and the list goes on. And so I'm just so thankful for it. And every day, coaches pour into other people. We give to other people. You know, our cups walk away so empty. But this has become a format where coaches, and not only coaches, but leaders can get on and pour into one another. We talk X's and O's all the time. We talk offenses and defenses all the time, scouting reports. We get that. We pay money and go to those things. But where do you get to a place where faith-based coaches can get in a place, talk to each other, build each other up, talk about the goodness of God and how to apply that even when we stand on the sidelines of the court or the field or the baseball diamond? So it's been an amazing venture. It really has. Wow. Yeah. I mean, just just like we talked about before offline and you and you just sharing, you know, just just some some of the cool, cool things that you have been able to do uh, by, by what but that you have been able to, you know, create. And, and you know, just take this take this thing, this, this purpose, this purpose driven mission and just just really live this thing out loud, because ultimately, you know, no, no matter who we are and no matter how big of an impact that we personally desire to make. And I mean, we can, you know, we can try to do it by ourselves, but, but ultimately right. God has, God has other plans. So, you know, yes. having you as a conduit to, you know, every time I say that, I always think back to like science and then how you, <laughs> how you have the magnets and the light bulb and the cords and you do all that stuff. But that's right up my alley when you talk about science. So that's, I, I get you. Yeah, yeah, and I I thought about that just now. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm but I'm also curious ju just to hear because I know you said that by way by way of you know the coaches Bible study, this is a way for you and other coaches to be replenished and you and other coaches to be refilled. But how el how else are you replenished? Like when you're feeling drained and when you feel you know you you've had a tough week or a tough couple of months. Like how else do you? go in and get replenished 
if there was somebody out there who happened to have that question. Like I'm just facilitating. No, I think that's a great question. Um, oh my goodness. Anybody that knows me knows, you know, of course, prayer, faith-based meditation, um, you know, my worship, you know, playlists all the time. Music is my go-to, you know, I'm that type person people think it's the craziest thing in the world i will put closed caption on the tv and listen to music and watch the show at the same time that's my thing it keeps me in the zen biggest in my family whenever i get back to my family i am back to balance immediately especially my nieces and nephews those little, little faces because i'm auntie chelsea and there is nothing better in the world right then when auntie chelsea you know walks in the spot you know um and then just being surrounded by good people i think the company that you keep has to enrich you the company that you keep has to feel and pour into you, has to support your mission. So my family is really huge in that aspect. Um, but basically about resting, mm. being intentional. And that was a hard thing for me to learn over the past years. But I really have become intentional about resting. I'm like, the Lord made the whole world, everything in it, and still rested on the seventh day. I can rest at some point, you know, and so being intentional about resting, but, you know, restoring myself through family, food. I love food. Cooking is my passion. I will get in the kitchen and I will just put in my music and my buds and just take over. Next thing you know, it's a big gourmet meal laying out there. But to me, that calms me. So just doing those regular things, it's nothing grand, just doing those basic things that I love, drawing near. If I leave or I leave a game or I leave a session with a servant leadership um, coaches Bible study and I feel like I'm you know to the top of my head you know with anxiety or filled up I go to those go-to's music's going on I'm calling my siblings like hey where the babies I need to talk to them I need to see them you know I'm going home I'm making sure even if you know my best friend or my godparents my husband has to cook something that I like that's what we're doing but I, I'm gonna come back to balance with just those day-to-day -day things that make me human I love that, and I and I, and I and I and I and I really specifically love it because I think sometimes no matter who we are, no matter where we are, it, we we might do it like subconsciously, but separate separate the human from people. I might say, yeah. you know, I might take away the coach on this part and and never see Coach Chelsea as yeah. Chelsea. Yeah. You know, just, just, I'm 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 just Chelsea. Yeah, I coach. Th these are things that I do. These are places that I am, but still, I'm I'm a human. You pinch me, it's gonna hurt. <laughs> yep. The, the you same, cut me, I'm a bleed. Way. I think you I think you said it best with that. And and so often sometimes it's even as simple as saying that. Yeah, you know, y'all know I'm human, right? And then quickly, but you have to set your own boundaries. That's another thing that I've learned mm. in my maturity. If you don't set boundaries, no one else will. So you have to and sometimes people will even have the audacity. You set boundaries and now they feel bad because they used to abuse those boundaries you didn't have, you know? So you have to just make sure that you yourself know you're human and that you take care of you. Um, because at the end of the day, you can't do God's work when you're running on E. Wow. I, I, I mean, I think I think that's a great plan. I'm gonna put an exclamation mark right there because I, I think you I think you really you really you really blessed us today just just with sharing your story, just with sharing uh, your background and sharing just the amazing work uh, that that you're doing, and even sharing that equation with us: uh, passion plus purpose equals peace. I'm, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have that's to like it. tweet that. I'm, I'm gonna mention you. I'm gonna have to tweet that though. That's, sure. a, that's that Coach Chelsea science, right? That's when Coach Chelsea. Ooh. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> I appreciate that, man. I appreciate uh, it truly. Oh man, we, we're definitely gonna have to have we're gonna have, have to have to have a follow up for sure. We're gonna have to ha circle back and you know just check in and uh, de definitely definitely touch base. We're gonna stay connected after this, but now, Absolutely. coach, we're gonna have to transition. Whoop. And now we're gonna even though I know basketball is your sport, but now we're about to about to slide in about to do a two minute drill. Let's do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And like, like I told you before, if anybody's listening for the first time, the two minute drill is just where we, where we have a little bit of fun on the Beyond the Bob podcast and do a few rapid fire questions just, just to get in a little bit deeper in Coach Chelsea's head and just see what she's thinking. So coach, are you ready? I'm ready, let's go. And here we go. Favorite food? 
fried chicken. What? Where? Homemade or what? What are we talking? I ha well, see, it has to be particular. It's homemade if I make it or my mom make it. My grandmother, rest her soul. Everybody can't do it. And if I have to buy it, Popeyes and Publix. Mm. Oh, Publix. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, underrated cereal. Raisin Bran Crunch. Oh, okay, okay. Favorite podcast. Yep. The Servant Leader and also Beyond the Ball. Mm, well played. <laughs> well played. Well played. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your, 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 your favorite Netflix quarantine show of preference. Oh my goodness. Uh, what is it? Behind the Dark? Beyond the Dark? I think that was called Beyond the Dark. Okay. Young girl uh, solved a murder while being blind. It's pretty dope. Watch it. I know. See? Wow. Okay. You're welcome. <laughs> What is your what? What's your go-to anchor scripture? My go-to anchor scripture. Mm-hmm. Since eight and twenty-eight, Jeremiah twenty-nine and eleven. I have to do both. Sorry. Mm, no, that's good. That's good. And and then uh, the last question is: What's one tip that you want to leave for a student athlete? Oh, you are a student first. That's why student comes before athlete. You are a student athlete. At the end of the day, that ball that you dribble, throw. Uh, hit with a racket or a bat, it's going to end at some point. Develop your identity and who you are and who Christ is because when that ball stops dribbling or insert your own sport, I don't want you to have identity crisis. There's more to you than what you play. Let's figure that out while you're young, while you're in high school, while you're in college. So when you graduate, if pro sports is not there for you, we have something else for us to do. There it is. There it is. And this this is just a bonus question. Who who is who is the who is somebody you would like to see on the Beyond the Ball podcast next for me to interview? Uh you want me to go um you know I dream big. So you want me to dream big for you or do you want me to be something within reach? I don't like I nothing that's that in reach. You, I think I like it. I think you need to either hit up David Walker who is the host, uh, co-host with Brandon Carr of the Iron Horse podcast. They're doing some amazing things over there. Or I would hit up Coach Kurt Hines, and I'm saying these names and also calling out based off what I see. Amazing football coach and motivational speaker um, who also understands and incorporates, you know, servant leadership, faith, sports, education, all in one. So take my word for it. Awesome people. Okay, okay. Well, I... I will reach out to those people. And I mean, if you want to drop an introduction, I always welcome those as well. Hey, listen, I feel network is our net worth and I will do it for you. Excellent. Well, I, I definitely appreciate you, Coach Chelsea. Please let people know where they can find you, how they can connect with you and uh, just share whatever you would like to at this time. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. I am Chelsea F. Muir on Facebook. I am at Chief Ran John, that's C-H-E-F-R-A-N-J-O-H-N on Instagram. And then on Twitter, which my boy Jonathan talks about, where you can find my crossovers and my words of wisdom, I'm at the Chelsea F. And you can see me on any of those platforms where we also streamline the servant leader, coaches and leaders Bible study on live and pre-record. So you can find me there and I look forward to connecting with you. Excellent. Excellent. Well, like I said before, Coach Chelsea, I definitely thank you for taking the time uh, to come and hang out with us today, come and hang out with me and, and the fellow ballers who are out there listening. Um, Absolutely. So great, grateful for this opportunity. And now to, to the ballers out there, if you have not taken the chance, first and foremost, you definitely want to want to follow Coach Chelsea uh, because she, she's just an amazing individual. and You see passion is just coming through her pores. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's probably the best way I can Thank say you. it. Uh, and, and, and then even, even in addition to uh, following and connecting with her, finding out more information uh, about the Bible study and, and amazing things she's doing. 